Japan, and thanks uh, to all of you uh, for being for participating to this event, um, which shows that in a way you are interested uh, in the collaboration with uh, with Europe in, in in the area of research, uh, either to come to Europe to do the research or uh, to be uh, an institution, for example, in Japan, uh, willing to collaborate with European partners. So, um, in my presentation, I will start uh, with the basis. Uh, I will show you the Maris Podolskaki reaction uh, with focus on two specific actions which are specific for you as being in Japan or as being a Japanese researcher, but also being a researcher from all over the world uh, in Japan. So, first of all, I will, um, I will give you an overview what the Maris Podolskaki is and what the the European Union, uh, how, how, how is it created, uh, this kind of program. And then I will go into details, I will introduce uh, these two actions. So let's start, um, let's start with, the, with the first slide. Uh, so basically, uh, to explain what is this Maris Podolskaki reaction, and also I will then later on be followed by my uh, colleague Alejandro, who will talk about the ERC program. Uh, both of them have got very similar rules. So in the beginning, there is the European Union, European Commission. Actually, the member states are contributing some money uh, to the overall fund. This money later on is used for different purposes. Uh, there is some money going, for example, to agriculture, to infrastructure, there is some money also going to research. Part of this money is going to research, and these last seven years, um, we have uh, we have the program Horizon 2020 uh, from 2014 to 2020, which will uh, which is of 80 billion euro, and this 80 billion euro is supporting different research programs. Uh, this Horizon 2020 for seven years is split in three groups. We call it pillars. Uh, which is the industrial leadership, societal challenges, so those are the, let's say, thematic topic, and the excellent science, which the Maris Podolska theory program is in, and also the ERC program is in. So we are here in this one group. So you can see more or less how this is built. It's a, it's a big budget for seen for this uh, period in 2005. The Maris Podolska key reaction, we have actually four actions. I will focus on two of them today, but just to give you an overview. Uh, in this program, we are supporting the doctoral uh, candidate, which is the ITN. You see it left uh, side up the corner. Um, <coughs> but I know that you are usually postdoc or even more experienced researcher or also representative from uh, universities uh, or other institutions. Therefore, I will focus on the next one, which is the IM Individual Fellowship, which is for the uh, which is for most of people with um, bigger experience, and also Rise Action, which you can uh, also see uh, here, which is uh, actually not a fellowship as such, but rather an exchange program. So okay, let's start with the Individual Fellowship. The Individual Fellowship, they have two dimensions. Uh, maybe also the public for that will be a little bit different because there is either the European fellowship, meaning that uh, you can do the research here in Europe with the European institution. And this is probably uh, more, interested, more interesting for um, post-doctoral uh, uh, researchers, also professors with higher experience, and that would like to come to Europe to do the research. And we have also the global fellowship, it's another kind of individual fellowship, which is maybe uh, more interesting for the institution, because like that, you may receive some European, for example, researcher who must be in uh, certain conditions. So I will talk about that. Later, let's start with the European fellowship. European fellowship is one researcher and one institution. So let's imagine that um, you are probably in Japan and uh, you can be a, a national, Japanese national, you can be also a national of any other country. The Maris Podolsky program is 
actually not putting any limit on the candidates, rather uh, is focusing on excellence. So there is one person that would like to do the research in uh, Europe. So now the problem is how to find uh, the institution that would be appropriate. So either you have already a, a cooperation with, for example, a university or research institute or even a company here in Europe, or you have some colleagues, some supervisors, for example, some network, and someone can recommend you something, then uh, you just follow it. Or you can do even a call for proposals uh, on the URAX's website or contact directly a university that you always wanted to work with. So just to see uh, if it would be possible to make a fellowship in Europe. And um, usually the big uh, players here in Europe uh, I would say uh, most of the universities, research institutes, and so on and so forth, they are pretty well aware of the Maris Podolska Fury uh, program as well as about the ERC program. So uh, they will probably immediately know what we are talking about and give you the feedback. So uh, if you are interested in doing that, there is not one person, one institute, you contact the institution. And uh, you submit the proposal. What is important for you to know is that the European Commission never signs uh, anything with a uh, private person. So basically, the contract that you will have uh, will still go, let's say, through the institution. So, of course, it will be, for example, some part that's supposed to cover your uh, salary. But again, this money will not be sent directly from the commission, it will be sent through the institution. Also, contacts and the reports and everything will be done through the institution, okay? So, uh, but usually also institutions, especially here in Europe, they are participating already in several of those actions. They have a staff that is specially dedicated for that, or at least aware of all the procedures. So, it will be, they may uh, also uh, advise you on something, they may help you, um, so this will not be a problem. Okay, so just in brief, the individual fellowship is for experience with you. So you remember, we have another action for the PhD candidate, this is also possible, but for this purpose, for this presentation, we are focusing on experience with you. For, for us, for the program, uh, it means that you either have a PhD or have at least four years of research experience. And uh, uh, so at the, at the time of uh, the deadline for the proposal. The deadlines for the proposals for the individual fellowship are every year. Basically, if you now uh, listen about that, and uh, now we have a deadline on the 14th of September, uh, which seems far in the future, but uh, in terms of preparation of the proposal, let's say that's really a uh, last well because you need to prepare your proposal relatively good. The success rate is for the European Fellowship around 17-18%, uh, so it's still quite okay, but uh, but you need to prepare your proposal quite in advance. But this is every year, let's say, at the same more or less time. So if you even miss or you are not succeeded, it's all, you are always encouraged to submit it again and again. Uh, I hope that there are not many games. <laughs> so uh, that you will finally uh, get your uh, fellowship. It is open to all nationalities, unique that uh, it can be Europeans, it can be Japanese, it can be Americans, it can be whoever. Uh, there are no limitations uh, for the nationality. So we can theoretically have 100 percent of fellows from Japan. Uh, they are next over third. Um, the duration is of two years, so if you are interested, you will go here to Europe uh, for a period of two years. And we are supporting, so the program is supporting all research areas. Uh, it's so-called bottom-up uh, approach. Uh, here there is a graph you can see on the slide uh, with the distribution uh, for, for the individual fellowship. So this uh, LIF, which is the life science, has the biggest share of 28% of the budget of the project uh, in the individual fellowship. 
So this list, uh, so the life science, social science, environment, and so on, does not really uh, show any priority that we are having for energy. The bottom up program does not give the thematic priority to energy. So the social science are as important as environment science and engineering. So in order for those disciplines not to compete with each other, we just aim to share the presentation or the proposal that arrived uh, to uh, that are submitted to our program. And so let's say in, in case here of life science, 28 percent of the budget went for that. But it means that 28 percent of the proposals that arrived were from the life science. So like that, we are excluding this group, we are dedicating money there, and they are not competing with each other, with engineering and chemistry, because it will be quite difficult to find um, the common, um, the common uh, elements of those to compare them. So you can see that, uh, that we are covering all disciplines, and you will always find one for yourself. Once you are submitting your proposal, you are actually choosing by yourself which uh, research area your project belongs to. If this is interdisciplinary uh, project, so from two areas, you decide uh, which area you prefer, which prevail, uh, and if then later on experts uh, realize that maybe uh, the choice uh, was not the most accurate one and they would like to shift it to another one, that's not a problem, and this does not make your proposal uneligible and so on and so forth. And just to talk about that, so we have uh, always in our proposal three independent experts uh, <coughs> that will uh, evaluate your proposal. So this actually gives this element of transparency uh, and assure you that there is no uh, special push for anyone. Uh, three of them, they need to agree on the score. Uh, so that's quite a fair approach. And so there is this to, uh, during these two years, uh, the following uh, amounts are, are given to the, to the institution. Uh, this left part, rest of research and unit cost, uh, those are, um, those are uh, categories of costs that will be transferred directly to you. So you can see there is 4,650, this is in euros. Uh, and this is gross amount. This is like, let's say, basic salary, which is uh, quite uh, okay for the, uh, for the European standard. This is still multiplied by the so-called country correction coefficient, which uh, adjusts the salary to the condition uh, and the cost of the country that you are in. So obviously there are some countries in Europe where the uh, living costs are lower, there are ones when the living costs are higher, so this will be adjusted through uh, this country correction practice. There is also mobility allowance uh, that we are always giving to our parents because they need to be mobile uh, to come from one country to another. Uh, and also family allowance, which is supposed to support uh, researchers with some family obligations. So as you can see, all, uh, the whole package, and this is uh, uh, that the researcher is receiving every month. And of course, it's a gross amount, so sometimes it's to arrive in that, but that's also different in different member states. And the, the, the percentage that is, uh, that is for taxation, and the mobility and family allowance with some ideal cases may be even excluded from the taxation. So, uh, so that's the condition. There is also 800 euros every month for research as such. So as you can see, this does not really support the infrastructure or the university that we are going, but that's not the purpose. The person Purpose and the main goal here is the, is the research and the focus on the researcher as such. Uh, but the university is still receiving this 800 euros every month for the purpose of this single project, and this cannot be used for any other purposes. And uh, also some management and overheads uh, for the institutions uh, to cover it. So those are the uh, overall conditions. Uh, this is also why there is a quite a big demand for um, for this action. Uh, just to let you know, we have a special funder. So once you apply uh, or you are willing to apply, you will go to a special website. You will see all these things uh, like reintegration, RI, career restart, and those are uh, some um, exceptionally 
uh, exceptional panels, uh, I will just focus on two of them. Uh, one is the society and enterprise. This is the last one. Uh, this is for individual uh, fellowship projects that will be with companies. So if you are interested to, uh, to do your research with companies, not with the research uh, institute, uh, public one, uh, or non-profit, or not with the university, but rather with the company, and you have something in mind, then we just have opened it for the first time, uh, because we've seen that it's quite difficult uh, for the companies to compete with universities. So this is only for one fellow, so you, one uh, company here in Europe, and then uh, we have a dedicated budget of 10 million for that, for this company. So, uh, if you are interested in to work with the company, this is something uh, interesting for you. And then there is also a reintegration grant, uh, this is this RI, this is rather for the Europeans that are spending already some time in Japan, and this is uh, for them to come back to Europe. Um, uh, so you may apply to this particular fund. So now about the global fellowship. So we talked a little bit about the European fellowship, not the global fellowship. So everyone who is representing uh, an organization uh, may now focus a little bit more. So the setting here in the global fellowship uh, is as follows. Well. There is one university or some institution from the member state or associated countries because as you uh, may also know that the Horizon 2020 I was talking about in the beginning of this research big program, and not only has the member states as such, but also associated countries, so some countries like Israel, Turkey, Switzerland, Norway, uh, that are actually contributing to the program at the same level as member states, and they are, despite they are not a member of the EU, they still uh, participate at the same level. So an organization from those countries, one fellow, uh, and a five country institute. And this is where the Japanese um, university or research institute may come. Uh, so the purpose of the Global Fellowship is uh, for the researcher to have actually an employment contract with a European partner. With this employment contract, the researcher is going, and here in this case, for example, in Japan, uh, for two years' time. During this time, the employment contract of the insurance and everything remains uh, with the European partner, uh, which means that actually this fellow is hosted there in Japan actually for free because the whole salary and everything is already paid by uh, the European partner. There is also a special country correction coefficient for Japan. So basically, for this period, the, the salary. Uh, is already paid and predefined by the European partner. The European partner is also receiving um, some additional money for research. So this money can also be transferred, but this is up to the agreement between the, the European partner and the, the Japanese partner, but usually it can go directly to Japan, because actually at the time uh, there is uh, no expenses uh, for this particular project in, in Europe. So you are receiving a fellow uh, who uh, actually has already an employment contract, so there is no, no, no cost uh, of him uh, regarding the salary. Also, the research costs that are covering part of your expenses related to the research of the person, so that's uh, very interesting. This is for the period of two years. And then there is another year that is following. It's a, it's a return phase, we call it. So the fellow after this two years is coming back to the European institution and is continuing this research uh, for additional money uh, with the same contract. So uh, as you can see, there is uh, this win-win situation for the Japanese partner and then for the, for the, for the European partner that will that later receive the, the fellow and also for the fellow who uh, transferred the knowledge to knowledge the, 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 the work in Japan and how it is done, and then try to organize these links and strengthen these links between the European and the, and the Japanese uh, organization. So this is the global fellowship. The, the, the financial conditions are very similar, actually the same as uh, for the European fellowship that I uh, showed uh, before. So 
but some guys are not an individual fellowship, uh, we are running, uh, we do not have much time, so I will not go into much detail just to give you a flavor of that. Uh, now the rise uh, action, so the, uh, the another action that I would like to talk about. This is also important uh, because um, it is the follow-up in a way of the ERSES program that uh, used to be uh, in the, in the before, uh, say, several years ago. Uh, so this uh, RISE program is not really a fellowship for a longer time, it's rather supporting some exchanges. Uh, they are also fellows, but this is uh, Program that looks a little bit like that. So don't be scared of the, the, the number of arrows here. This is supposed to show exchanges. So there is always a common project, and this is very important. And this is related to the staff working in different institutions. So let's imagine that there is a Japanese institution uh, where there are researcher experience one or, or just doing a PhD. There are some technicians, there is some managerial staff. All of them, they are eligible uh, to be exchanged. Uh, with some European partners. Uh, however, it cannot be just exchanged from one, uh, let's say, uh, administrative office to another dealing with some uh, strategic funds or, not, or so on. This, uh, each exchange and the whole program needs to be dedicated to some research project. So basically, you may already have some co collaboration with some other universities, and then you are saying, okay, I'm interested, we are Work on, uh, on the same, uh, let's say, objective. So let's submit this proposal. We will send some uh, some staff members to uh, the European partner. The European partner will send some staff members to us. So, <coughs> so uh, this is uh, this may strengthen the collaboration uh, with, uh, with this uh, partner. So here the duration is of four years. Uh, we need to have a minimum three participants. So as you remember, the previous one was one, uh, but here there are three, at least uh, two from um, member states or associated countries. And uh, there is a partnership agreement. Uh, the the uh, second one, so to send the person is from one month to 12 months, so up to one year, a uh, person may be sent. It is not also necessary to make it in one, in one go means that, for example, during these four years, someone may be sent for, like, let's say, two months, and then two months. Uh, so it does not have to be consecutive. Uh, the eligibility is that the staff member is, in a way, linked to the institution that is sending uh, the, the person. So it means that it's not someone who just arrived and it's sent uh, because we have this possibility. Now it is rather someone who is already for six months at least somehow linked. So it may be even a stipend, some kind of contract, but that the person is linked with the institution so that some knowledge can be transferred also uh, to, uh, to this uh, other counterpart. And uh, it is limited to 540 researcher months in, in consortium, so this gives you more or less uh, an idea. It depends uh, for how long you want to send the staff. You may send actually a lot of people. So here, uh, usually we have this, e, uh, th those are the staff members that say participating in the uh, RISE team for the moment. This is also the, the biggest program that we have uh, to collaborate with third countries. Uh, so usually those are the CR and ESR, so the big, two big columns. Uh, this is Experienced researcher and early stage researcher, meaning those are researchers. But there, there is some administrative staff as well, but very, very small one because usually the staff is not really linked to the activities, uh, the research activity. There is some technical staff, uh, still not very present, but also the share of the universities is not very, very big, and the managerial staff. So, as you can see, still preparing the research, but it is possible to involve some also other staff members into the project. Uh, and what is also important uh, to talk uh, about in this uh, context is that Japan is uh, in a specific uh, situation uh, of not receiving uh, direct funding from the European Commission as such. So you as an organization, maybe uh, you should be aware that um, these types of countries that are participating in Horizon 2020, they are member states, so member states of the European Union, and then there are five countries, so everyone else. 
But from this third countries, as I uh, mentioned, there are these associated countries that are treated the same as the member states. There are some eligible for funding countries, like for example the African countries, that do not really have the, the money to support the, uh, the program. So the European Commission is saying, okay, we will pay uh, for you. But there are also some other countries, and Japan is one of them, but it's also China, Russia, US, uh, Canada, Australia. Uh, that kind of, in our perspective, that uh, have enough money to cover their, their part, let's say. So if there are exchanges, we, as a European Commission, we are supporting the European partner, and the Japanese partners that will send their staff uh, over here to Europe, they will need to find their own funds, uh, so that uh, they are covering uh, their respective uh, expenses. Okay. So with that I would like to, to finish. And, uh, if you want uh, to have uh, more details, uh, I encourage you, uh, first of all, to go to the participant portal. And uh, don't be scared. This is like a main website for all the programs within the Horizon 2020 and even more. Uh, you can find all the relevant documents. Uh, a very serious one, the less serious one, which is like, for example, the guide for Africa for the marriage of those factory action, meaning less serious, meaning that it's not legally binding, but it's still uh, very close to the sensitive like, interpretation uh, of, of the legal document. Okay, okay, so, but this is very serious. This is the guide for Africa, one for rights, one for the individual fellowship, and you can both find it uh, on this participant portal. But what is also very important, uh, we have a network of the national contact points. National contact points um, are, um, are people who are appointed uh, usually by uh, the government uh, or some, some agency, national agency, to help uh, to apply to uh, European projects. And we have sometimes in all the member states, uh, unfortunately, there is no dedicated one in, uh, in Japan, uh, but in all the member states, we have a uh, national contact fund dedicated for the Maris Konoski reaction. So, that's it. If you just have an idea, okay, I will use this IF, the European Fellowship, I would like to go to uh, Eiffel, let's say, for <coughs> two years period to do my research, I know that they would probably be happy to work to do something with me. So, I would uh, advise you uh, to go, for example, on this website to read the document, but also to go on the participant portal and then you can find the contact details of, of the German uh, NCP, contact the person, say, okay, uh, me at the University of Heidelberg that say we are interested to work this participate in the uh, European Fellowship, which is a system. And those people that are highly spe specialized in it because they are even screening some proposals. But I don't know if you know about that, and most of the European uh, institutions, uh, research institutes or, or, or universities, or even companies, we are collaborating a lot with CMAT, PD, never know about that. They have a special department that is uh, focusing, of, okay, not only on the Marisco's program, but you will, they will be aware of that, and they will contact this entity, and then actually you will be also involved in the, in the discussion, because you will, together with the institute, you will prepare that proposal uh, to be So, uh, if you want to know more about the Marisco Dostoevsky reaction, uh, we have also our website, then there is the panel of the year, uh, you can read some interesting stories of uh, what we are involved in, so this will probably encourage you a little bit more. We are also on Facebook and Twitter, so we are following the, 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 uh, the regular uh, mainstream uh, channels. Uh, you can also follow us uh, there with other information. Uh, and here are the information about the, the calls. So those are the calls that I was mentioning that they are every year. And uh, here on the 14th of uh, September 2016, there will be a deadline for that call for the individual fellowship with the respective budget, as you, as you may see. And this actually repeats uh, every, every year. And 
determine what to give it. So even if you will mean this first <coughs> application, uh, then you can still try another one. The rice is closed uh, for this year, uh, but will be open uh, in December and will close in uh, April the next year. So with that, I would like to thank you and wish you good luck uh, with the application to the master of the duration. Thank you.